<clears throat> All right, everyone, it is now 7.02 p.m. We are going to go ahead and get started with tonight's presentation. I just wanted to say welcome to everybody on the call, and I'm glad that you're here. Uh, tonight, we have a lot of information that's coming out, and by a lot, I mean six slides worth, so it should be relatively quick. Um, at any time throughout the slideshow, feel free to put your questions in the chat, uh, and we will answer them at the end uh, Q&A style. So I'd like to first uh, introduce everybody on the call with me. So I'm Joe Lewis. I'm the camp director. I'm sure you've seen me uh, from time to time on these webinars, uh, if you've attended in the past. Uh, also with me is Chris Adamini, who is our camp commissioner, Connie Mapley, who is our office manager, Ryan Henderson, who is our operations director, and Jansen Limley, who is the camping director for Southeast Michigan. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and kick things off. I'm actually going to hand things right over to Ryan Henderson, our operations director, to talk a little bit about food service at camp and how it's changed a little bit. Okay, so just some updates on the food service. Um, instead of food coming individually for each pod, now we're going to actually be sending the food for the entire troop all together. And uh, we're going to be having the adults help us portion that food out to the scouts. So this food is going to arrive all in uh, disposable containers. The adults will serve it cafeteria style to their youth. And then for the meal themselves, the scouts will eat in their pods. So they'll have the individual picnic tables where they can go and sit with their pod. Serving will be done as the troop. And then eating will be done in those pods. Um, that's really it. That's the biggest update for food. Uh, for our people with special dietary needs, their food is still going to come separate in their own personal container. Uh, it will be labeled with each scouter scouter's name, and that will just be passed off to the troop as well, and they can just give that container to the individual for their special dietary needs. Fantastic. And Thank you so like much. Brian. Hey guys, uh, I do have a quick question. One of the questions that actually came up at our webinar back in April, and I know things have been changing, um, but one of the questions was, so if we are now gonna serve food um, as a troop and then eat within our pods, can you describe a little bit about how the eating situation or about how the cleanup situation is going to look? Uh, so the cleanup situation for this, I would still recommend that you guys do it in your pods uh, because Doing it as a troop is going to take a lot of time to get everyone through a single dishwashing line and get everything clean and having everyone touch those same contact points is what we're trying to avoid. So having one adult leader scoop food is a good deal, but having everyone go and touch the washing station one after the next after the next, uh, that's just a possible cross-contamination issue. So we still want to do our cleaning in those pods that we ate in. Um, we can heat water as a troop together, once again, with like one adult leader, dishing it out, one contact point, one person. Um, but the cleaning should really be done in those pods. I'd suggest hitting up the Dollar Tree for some of those $1 washer bins that are like in that pink kind of blue color and getting enough for everybody to wash. We will be supplying uh, sanitization tablets as well as instructions on what your temperature, your water should look like um, and for cleaning. Fantastic. This is a huge uh, uh, accommodation slash change that we've been able to make uh, thanks to some pretty hard work on the administration's team or uh, uh, on our behalf, um, especially Ryan's. So uh, this is going to be a great time. Uh, serving in pods is going to be difficult. This should make it a whole lot more accessible for everyone, including our troops, which is the most important. So Let's go ahead and I'm going to hand it off to Chris Adamini to talk about our 10 day out meetings. Let's go. Okay, so <clears throat> at our 10 day out meetings, uh, which if I'm calculating right, uh, should start late next week. Um, we'll cover the check in procedures. Um, confirm your numbers, um, and we'll talk about evening program signups, um, check-in times, and more. Um, we'll be holding this in a meeting format instead of the webinar, and um, first one will be June 10th, 
uh, for our week one units. Fantastic. So this will be a great opportunity. This is uh, Thursday the 10th, so not this upcoming week, but the week after that. Uh, so as our week one units are aware, and hopefully they're on this call right now, camp is coming quickly. We are only a few weeks away, uh, and this 10-day out meeting is going to be held by the administration team. We're going to be able to uh, really talk about everything that's coming up. It's going to be in a uh, less webinar, more uh, meeting style. So we're going to be able to have a discussion with all of our unit leaders as we continue uh, with our talks. Uh, typically, these are held in person, uh, but this year we're doing them virtually just so that we can accommodate everybody, especially with everything going on. Yes, Jansen. Question uh, came in. Who should attend the 10 day out meeting? Leaders, senior patrol leaders, who should all come? Absolutely. I would suggest that any adult leader who is interested in uh, knowing things about camp and being involved should come. And I also 100% encourage uh, all pat or senior patrol leaders to come as well. As like I said, we're going to be talking about our evening program signups. And uh, traditionally, that is something that the senior patrol leaders help people do is making sure that they're getting to the right place at the right time and having the most fun possible. So please engage your youth leadership uh, in this process as we are a youth leader driven uh, organization for Scouts BSA. All right. I, I just suggest that at a minimum, your scout master or who's, who's ever your acting scout master and the SPL at a minimum uh, attend. Absolutely. All right. This next slide has a little bit of misinformation, so I'll take this one. It is with our DHS clearance. Uh, so everybody should have gotten a communication from the council that says there is a new DHS clearance form. Uh, it is at that link that's on the screen. Uh, if somebody else could share that link within the chat, I'd really appreciate it. But this has to be filled out for everybody over the age of 21, not 18. That was my mistake. Um, it was a rumor that I had heard rather than fact uh, from the sheet. So fact from the sheet and from Lara and everybody who handles this, everybody who is 21 years age or older that is coming to camp needs to have this. Uh, that's for our visitors, which we won't have any this year, uh, but in future years, that's for our visitors. That's for every 21 and older person that's coming on to property. Um, it's really, really important. So make sure that you get it in. Also, an important note is that they released a new form uh, recently within the last month. And so with that new form that's been released, everybody has to get a new one Sub, or everyone has to submit a new one uh, unless it's been submitted this year to my understanding. So if you submitted in 2021 for DHS clearance, you are still good to go. If you submitted a DHS clearance request before the year 2021, which is the year we're currently in, uh, regardless of registration, regardless of whatever, you have to get a new DHS clearance form. Uh, it is, you're able to do this online via email now, which is really awesome. Um, so make sure you do that. You no longer have to mail it in. You no longer have to get it mailed back. You can email it in and get it emailed back. I got mine within four days of when I sent my request out. So make sure that you get these sent back to you as a leader, not me. A couple of leaders have gotten theirs sent to me. Uh, it's important that you keep this as a part of your records and you bring this a copy of this to camp. So please don't send them to me, keep them on yourselves and uh, bring them to camp. Jansen, looks like you got a question. I do, um, there's a couple of questions uh, that popped in uh, and um, appreciate the, the questions coming in about the DHS forms. So when you go to that link um, that is on there and we'll send it out to, to, to everyone again as well, you'll have the ability uh, to either receive um, the, the DHS clearance form back to you in, in two forms. One is a paper form. The other way, which is the way that we're encouraging is an email form. So the, so the state of Michigan will actually email you a copy of the form, save that 
on your computer, in your cloud space, wherever you have access to it, uh, and then print off a copy to make sure that your unit has it when coming to summer camp. Uh, you don't need to mail that to us ahead of time. And in order to ensure that you have your paperwork required to be at summer camp, um, email is a quick turnaround timeframe. Uh, the snail mail, um, could take longer. Uh, and so uh, please try to make sure that you and your uh, leaders indicate that you want to email to your individual email account uh, and then save that. And then um, as whoever is your coordinator within your troop that's gathering that information, make sure that that takes place. Uh, if um, for anyone in the chat, if we did, if, if, if that's not clear for some reason, please uh, continue to make a comment. Let's see if we missed anyone else here. Um, and uh, just a comment here from Bob Johnson, he says, and get the return verification from the state. Uh, you need to save the form, print the form, sign the form, and then scan it. So you actually, um, it's a fillable a PDF to a uh, point on, on your computer, um, but the way to go about doing it is to complete it as much as possible. You will need to print it, actually put your um, your signature on that form, rescan it, and then send it in an email uh, to the email address that's stated on the form. Bob, thank you for that clarification. Fantastic. If anybody's ever confused about this and uh, you don't want to speak up in the comments right now, feel free to give me a call or a text or send me an email about it. Uh, but call and text by far is the best way to reach me now as we prepare for summer camp. Uh, all right. So up next, we have our updated mask policy. So as everybody knows, the state of Michigan is changing rapidly. The entire country, the entire world is changing rapidly. Uh, so now we have an updated mask policy. So what that really means is if you're outdoors in an outdoor setting or underneath a pavilion that is outdoors, you no longer need to wear a mask while you're socially distancing. So that includes you have to wear a mask if you're within your pod and you're not able to social distance. So once you're able to social distance from every single person that's around you, then you're able to take your mask off outdoors. That is new. So my suggestion, bullet point number two, is to bring your camp chairs with you. If it is nice and sunny or nice and shady outside, and you're able to sit right outside of a pavilion and six foot distance yourself from everybody else uh, with the help of a camp chair, then I highly suggest you do that if that's something that your unit or your parent or your youth is wanting to do. Um, we don't have enough picnic tables to put, you know, 30 picnic tables in each area, unfortunately. Um, so please help us out by bringing your camp chairs if this is something that you're interested in. Um, so if you cannot, and just a reminder, if you're outdoors, but you can't socially distance, I have to sit, you know, two feet away from somebody, you have to wear your mask. That's, that's everywhere. And then indoors, masks are still required regardless of vaccination. So even if you're fully vaccinated, you're good to go. Masks are still required for all participants while indoors. That's really important to note. So make sure whether you're with, you know, whatever, unless you're in your tent or inside of the shower, taking a shower or whatever, you're wearing your masks at all times, unless you're outdoors and you're six foot apart from everybody else. Fantastic. Any questions in the chat from that? I don't think so. All right, next up. Yes, uh, always have your scouts carry their mask with them regardless of where they go. Uh, in case, especially for like some of our merit badges that do require some uh, closer mingling, uh, like shooting sports or getting scouts up on horses, always have your scouts carry a mask with them regardless of their planned activity as sometimes things are best done instruction is best done, you know, two feet from somebody able to show them something up close. That way you can mask up while the instruction is happening. And then you can demask after you're both six foot apart outdoors. 
and I think to go along with that, as we reinforce our motto of be prepared, just like um, we would encourage every scout and leader and staff member to have a water bottle with them at every point in time, um, because who knows when you need a, need a drink of water, who knows when you'll need your mask. Um, being the way that camp is set up the, this summer, the amount of times we'll actually be in, in an indoor space um, is limited, uh, unless you want to go to the training post. We'd really love you to go to the training post. We have some really cool new stuff there this year, um, but then also to make sure that if that class calls for it, that you're prepared uh, and have that mask. So, uh, and then also uh, as you're working on your on your packing list, um, having one mask isn't enough. Just like having one pair of underwear isn't advised either. I would encourage you to be prepared and bring multiple things uh, and multiple pairs of socks, um, undergarments, mask. Be prepared across the board. Absolutely. And uh, just a quick answer to a question in the chat. You do not have to wear masks while in the shower. Um, sorry if I, I confused anybody on that. All right. And finally, our last slide for tonight is thank you. As I said before, everything is constantly changing. Uh, up is down, left is right, sideways is I don't even know. Um, but if any drastic things happen, any drastic changes or minor changes happen uh, as we prepare for June 20th when our first week arrives, I will let you know. We'll send out emails, we'll make calls, just like we've been doing throughout this entire thing. We'll make sure that you are all informed of any changes that may happen because, as we know, they continually do. Um, and with that, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. We take questions and comments and concerns on Facebook. Uh, we take them at my email. We take them at my phone number. My email right now says that it's easiest to text or call me, preferably text if it's textable, uh, followed by call, because I am running all over the state, running all over camp, running all over everywhere, uh, trying to get us prepared for camp so that we can have a great time over the summer. Um, so a lot of the time I may be away from the computer or driving or anything of the sort where I can't actively watch and answer emails uh, as much as we're all used to. So um, with that, do I have any questions or any of the sort? Yeah, a couple of questions have come in. And again, uh, this is a great time to ask them. Um, question came in and says, uh, if vaccinated, uh, do um, does an individual still need to wear a mask outdoors if less than six feet? That is correct. Even if you're vaccinated, you have to wear a mask outdoors if you're less than six feet away from somebody. Uh, that is what Lara, our licensing agency in the state, is telling us to do regardless of the state orders that are out right now. Fantastic. Uh, we'll stick on the COVID question. Uh, there's another one. Uh, it says, will fully vaccinated leaders or scouts need to leave camp if they develop COVID symptoms while at camp? That is a great question that I don't necessarily know the answer to right now. Uh, Jansen, do you have any word from higher up? I do. If you're sick, you're going home. Um, not to not to, not to be blunt. Um, so so with the vaccination, so that you, so and again, we're getting information from all sources. Um, with vaccinations, um, if you were to have an exposure to somebody that was symptomatic um, or had tested positive uh, for a COVID and you're vaccinated, you would not need to have that quarantine time time frame. Um, however, just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you don't get you don't have the chance to get it. Just like with the flu, you have the chance to possibly still get the flu or. If if you get the flu shot, you have the still chance to still get the flu. So if we have campers that are campers, staff members, leaders that are exuding uh, symptoms, um, fevers, uh, we are not taking the precautions of waiting it out. Uh, we are going to uh, call the appropriate individuals or emergency uh, contacts uh, to have that person removed from camp. Uh, and so trying to protect the whole family, the whole herd of uh, summer camp to ensure that um, uh, hopefully we don't get into that situation, um, but if we get to, if there is a situation within your unit, uh, that's a conversation that Joe Lewis, uh, our, our medical officer, and the key leadership of that unit will uh, will have if we have to remove somebody because uh, they don't fit the criteria. So. Yeah, yeah. For their questions on that, feel free to let me know. Um, question came in uh, from Kendra. Thanks, Kendra. It says, uh, when, will, when will we know um, what the night activities are? Great question, Kendra, we will be uh, revealing those at the 10 day out meeting and then you'll be able to sign up for those at the 10 day out meeting as well. 
Um, so we're going to release a registration on uh, our Black Pug system as we reveal those. So with the new things that are coming out and all of our new activities and orders, uh, we're trying to keep as flexible as possible by offering the best program as possible. So we're waiting a little bit long for the evening programs, but that is so we can offer the absolute best evening program that we can uh, when the time comes. Things keep changing. <laughs> yes, they do. And we're all like playing three for evening up programs. So I realize that's not necessarily what everyone wants to hear, but it's been it's been it's been a little bit frustrating as as we come up with plans A, B, and C and and moving on down. Um, but along the lines of of 10 day out meetings, Joe, the question came in: uh, When will we receive information on the 10 day out meeting, and what time will those happen? So. We will receive information on the 10 day out meeting next week. I'm sending all of the invitations out for each 10 day out meeting next week uh, by Friday. Uh, and those will happen at 7 p.m. Uh, each week. So it's gonna be fluctuating on who's there and who's not as uh, some of these meetings do occur during our summer camp uh, timeline. Uh, so as we continue to go forward, uh, they will always be at 7 p.m., but who is leading them and uh, ensuring that we're all getting the right information will change. Uh, next question came in um, from Betsy. It says, um, are you still requiring uh, the health monitoring form prior to camp arrival? We are still requiring the health monitoring form prior to camp arrival. So you still have to fill out that, uh, I believe it's 14 day out health monitoring form. Uh, for each scout and scouter. Uh, and next question is, um, so 10 days out, is that Thursday or the Wednesday prior to, or two weeks prior to camp? That would, that would be Wednesday, correct? That would be, that would be Wednesday. My apology, I misspoke earlier. Depends, uh, yeah. Depends yeah. on the interpretation. That's okay. It's, you can, you can, you can, Turn it either way but yes wednesday so in essence two wednesdays before your arrival to camp will be this will be the day of your 10 day out meeting uh, and you'll get a specific ring central invite from um, joe and his administration team um, so you guys can log in so there's no need to rsvp for those um, it'll be a link that you'll be able to click on and enter into a virtual uh, meeting space, just like you would with um, your troop, or maybe for roundtables um, that have been um, in a virtual Ring Central Zoom meeting, um, anything like that, um, and that allow um, a chance to have some dialogue where you can ask questions um, instead of just putting them into a chat room. And then, specifically, the other part of this, in the beauty of the 10 day out meeting, is that it'll allow unit leadership and senior patrol leaders to get to know one another prior to the arrival to camp um, so that we can start the teamwork the teamwork process um, before your, uh, your arrival, because especially this summer more than ever, uh, we're gonna have to be uh, a, a tight knit, but socially a distance family uh, to make sure that we're looking out for everyone. And the quicker we can establish some, uh, some relationships or realize that we have some old friends that we haven't seen in a few years that are coming back to camp, uh, that are coming the week that we're coming, um, will allow us to be able to better um, take care and support everyone. Uh, and so we're looking forward to that ability to network and help you prepare so that you guys have a great week when you're at camp. Fantastic. Any other questions? So uh, just a, a sneak peek into some of our evening programs to get you a little bit excited. We will be offering the cowboy action shooting activity uh, one evening of camp. We will be offering a game night. We will be offering our astronomy night as usual, um, a catapult building and launching contest uh, along with some uh, tricks from our Wranglers. So uh, things to look forward to um, as we continue to get ready. Also, just to note, the Cowboy Action Shoot is for 14 years and older with a permission slip, which we will be sending out uh, as a part of our 10 day out meeting as well. I'd like to thank everybody for being on the call tonight. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all at camp shortly. We are only a few weeks away from our first week of camp and we are geared up, ready to have a great summer. Uh, if anybody 
We still have some key staff positions that we need filled throughout the summer. So if you do have some staff, uh, preferably 18 years or older, uh, we have just about the coolest staff I've ever met ready for the summer. Uh, but we are still in need of an outdoor skills director and a first year camper director. So if you know of any Eagle Scouts uh, that are 18 years or older, I would love to have them on our staff this summer. And we are willing to pay the money and give them food and a nice place to stay for the summer. So um, with that, thank you all so much. And I look forward to seeing you at camp soon.